I told you when we come back, we'll be having a wonderful discussion. Uh, I think it's been a while we had something like this, you know, three or quite a number at a go. But today we do have a guest in the studio. Then we do have another one on Zoom. We have another one on call. So you can just imagine how wonderful and interesting the show is going to get. Today happens to be the World Youth Skills Day. And basically, it's it aims to recognize the strategic importance of equipping young people with skills for employment, decent work, and entrepreneurship. And one thing Africa Global Radio focuses on is especially entrepreneurship. You know, promoting encouraging and then putting them out there it's very important when you have people trying to work hard ingenuity in itself creates a lot of development and i'm happy that we have quite a number of people here we're going to start the show with okay so now i'm going to introduce my guest but i'm going to start with the one directly in front of me so we have alfred in cancer and he happens to be an entrepreneur and the founder of platinum platinum hello alfred hello how are you I'm um, doing great. Okay, I can I can see you came fully prepared because he actually is wearing his T-shirt with <laughs> Plugnum on it. And yeah. b- before we quickly jump into what Plugnum is all about, also we have joining us via Zoom, we have Fazia to Seydou Dabon, and she happens to be an entrepreneur who makes shoes. Hi, Fazia. Hello, Fazia. Can you hear me? Okay, I think... I think uh, we're, we're still trying to connect with her. But then we have on phone with us, we do have uh, Dr. Ejekum Prince Ajete, and he happens to be the co-founder and the president of Ogalia Limited. Hello, Mr. Prince. Yeah, hello. Hi. How are you doing, doctor? I think I, I think I can just stick with doctor. Doctor is fine, no, no, right? No, no. Yeah, <laughs> just say Prince. Okay. Uh, my name is Prince, and I'm fine. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, you would have to pardon me for today because... Uh, we, uh, the nature of our work, we are in town, um, seven these small embassies, so uh, it's not going to be that quiet. Okay, okay, okay. But I think once we can hear you, I think that's the most important thing. And oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. part of the hassle, yeah. so it's a good thing. <laughs> You're welcome yeah, to the Africa Daily Show. Well, all right. Okay. Thank you. Quickly, let me start with Alfred, who is here with me in the studio. Platinum. So, I mean... Bef- before what is Plugnum, what do you do? If someone asks you to introduce yourself, what do you do? Uh, I would just say, um, I run a business. That's simply what I do. That's simply what you do. <laughs> yeah. you, you just, as basic as that, you just run a business. Yeah, I just run a business. I run my business. Okay. Yeah. So then if I actually to, if I proceed and say, okay, what kind of business do you okay. run? Okay. So we assist um, local companies and local web developers mm-hmm. in getting their websites up and running. Okay. And that basically, I mean, all the resources they need to get that done mm-hmm. without spending so much money on, for example, overseas companies. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Now, was this something you, did, was something you studied from school? I mean, was this the plan all along? Okay, I'd say since um, around 14 years, wow. yeah, I've been very passionate about the internet and wow. web. So, yeah, I did study IT. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's all because of the basis that I just wanted to do web. So, so then, I mean, for you, you, you had a goal when you were younger. You just said, look, I'm <laughs> pursuing this. This is it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that, that, that dream or that ambition came um, on top of another ambition, another that goal. Okay, so, so there, the, was there was a base yes. before you built upon yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, let, let's just hold that thought and go to <laughs> doctor. Hello, doctor. Yeah, hello. I'm don't, here. don't worry, I'm, I'm still going to call you doctor. I know you're friends, <laughs> but I'm still going to call you doctor. Okay, so if I were to meet you and I say, what do you do? What would be your response? Okay, uh, my business is simply empowering micro and small local manufacturers in Africa to be able to compete effectively on a global scale. That's it. So that is as simple as that. Yeah. Wow. Simplified into it. But if I ask you to further go on to it, uh, what's this the plan for you? I mean, when growing up, did you think, oh, I'm going to grow up and set a business and I'm going to put all this into (laughs) Was that it? Or did you actually study it in school with... Did you have an initial plan or was this a backup plan? Okay, uh, personally, my, my, my life has been about experiences and 
uh, discomfort in, in, in the communities in which I grew up. I grew up. So it's always been uh, trying to find solutions to the problem that I'm confronted with. Uh, we we uh, started up trying to solve human problems. So we ended up in the health field mm-hmm. trying to solve human problems. Uh, it got to a point where we realized that, no, hey, uh, you can't be, I, I would all respect to people who are, who are doctors, you, you are inside and you are solvent. But I realized that the problem that I see mm-hmm. uh, as a child uh, was more of economic than health. So if it's more of economic than health, then why don't I do something that would improve the lives of the vulnerable in a society? So the vulnerable, I personally am uh, a son of uh, a disappointed local manufacturer. Uh, my mother was a fashion, we, in this eight days, we call it fashion designer. She was a, a seamstress. And because of these uh, economic uh, hardships, she had to quit and then go into farming. So uh, growing up, I just realized that, no, we would have to uh, uh, try and create solutions that will support these people and then make sure that they are globally competitive and mm-hmm. also gaining uh, some, some tri- because this is what they train people, they train the youth. Mm-hmm. So we realize that when we help them, we don't just help them, but we also help give people the opportunity to gain skill sets that will make them economically stable. So that, that, that's how we ended up there. Wow. Okay, so basically yours is solution-centered. You're here to give the solution, and it was channeled or was fooled by your experiences growing up. Yeah, sure. It's super important. Okay, Alfred, um, I'll come back to you, Doctor. No, one, one thing, what what gives? I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of web design companies. Web, I mean, we have we have a we have a plethora of them mm-hmm. in the system. Mm-hmm. What gives Platinum the edge? What makes Platinum different? Okay, so we are not a web design agency. Okay, so we provide solutions for, for example, a web design agency to provide services for their customers. So then with Platinum, it's not like me, the consumer, the uh, the one at the end of the chain coming to you directly, but then you provide yeah. to the people that I would go to. Yes, definitely. But we still have like a micro service for those who want to come direct. I mean, based on your budget. I, is that like a priority <laughs> service or priority list for setting? I mean, yeah. you said based on your budget. Yes. Yeah, because that one is just like a very micro service. Like you can't really afford the web design agency. So okay. we can just give you something that's like, you know, you can just get online. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then that, that makes it different from the rest. But don't you have competitors in the same field? Um. Uh, locally, I don't really see competitors. I just see people who are more like resellers. Like they go on GoDaddy, they buy and they sell to other companies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or they go to Namecheap, they buy, they sell to other companies. But at Platinum, that's not what we do. We are building like a whole infrastructure on top of GCP, that's Google Cloud. Mm-hmm. So what we are building is extremely different from what some of the local people are doing. Okay. But the fact that they are still in the market and they have a lot of customers, Mm -hmm. that makes them competition. But technology-wise, I don't think they are competition. Okay, so you actually mentioned GoDaddy. I think you're familiar with Name.com. Yes. And the rest, yes. Now, when people actually create the website and they have issues, mostly when you have issues with your your server or the person who is hosting it for you, Mm -hmm. you're actually trying to contact it. Mm -hmm. Because the people are not in the same space or the same country, it takes time. It takes time. So... Is it different with Platinum? Because you guys are here and you are doing it for them here. Yes. And so, you're not reselling it. Yes. So that's that's the beautiful part of the business we do, right? So when people create websites for people, mm-hmm. like designers do for businesses, yeah. and they hand over the website, the designer is gone. Yeah. Right? Sometimes when the whole year that you purchase your hosting expires and you want to even renew, renew it. yeah. It's like you have to call some guy somewhere who did your website for you. It's yeah, like that's true. I can't get hold of him. Sometimes they, it's like they don't even remember the password they used. Yeah. Right. But on Platinum, it's more or less like we deal with the business you are working with. So mm-hmm. you're a web designer, you create a website for Africa Global Radio mm-hmm. and they host their website with us. Okay. We have a secondary partnership with Africa Global, that's your client. Yeah. You un- you understand. Mm-hmm. So when the tenor is expired and they need to renew it wouldn't be like they need to contact you before they do their review. So then Africa Global Radio can come directly to and you. And are hosting. Without you, the designer. designer. So then even if we stop working with us, we still have we access still have to do access. our work. Yeah. Okay, that, that that is actually a great one yeah. and a new one. <laughs> Dr. Prince. 
Yeah, hello. Yes, I wanted to find out, I mean, with what you're doing, have you identified any competition? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Okay, uh, we don't see competition. What we see is uh, complement in diverse ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, because uh, the only edge we have uh, is the fact that we understand the people better, uh, mainly from experiences and the fact that we're always close to our clients. Now, other people are trying to do what we are doing, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't still see it. At the end of the day, it's a matter of trying to revolutionize the African economy for the better of the micro, I think the underprivileged, like the micro and small local businesses. Yeah. Okay. So we feel we see that as a complement to uh, the main goal, the, the general actually the, the general goal of empowering financially these uh, informal sectors who form a majority key player in the economy of Africa. So uh, we believe that 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 that's all good. Well, that's that that is important. I mean, the the way you look at it enables you to actually grow it because you don't see them as a competition. <laughs> It, it makes yeah. it a bit easy so that you're not necessarily striving to beat them at what they're doing, but you're striving to better what you are doing. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's now, I want to find out, outside what you're doing, I'm sure you do possess, I mean, other skill sets. Because, I mean, today happens to be the World Youth Skills Day. Yes. And yes. can you mention a couple of skill sets that you do possess from which you think you can earn money if you choose to divert or focus on that? Okay. Um, all right. Um, I'm from the health background, I'm 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 an optometrist by 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 academic. Okay. Uh, yes. And then, whilst in school, I knew the challenge that I wanted to uh, tackle, and you know mm -hmm. that, de like developing a solution for Africa. Uh, majority of the solutions we see here are just the X Y Z versions of the big companies in Accra. Uh, sorry, the big companies in, in, in the U.S. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, in order to develop an effective solution for, for Africa, you have to understand the people well. And it was a tough task looking at the various, the diversity of Africa. So you have to look at diversity marketing. You have to look at execution leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to look at sales. You have to look at marketing. Mm -hmm. And this is what prompted me uh, reading a lot, taking a lot of uh, responsibilities, even going through uh, student leadership just to uh, know, empower myself to be able to deal with people and be able to uh, uh, empower myself in terms of leadership. So uh, the execution leadership, um, skills, uh, diversity marketing, and then strategy, these are the, the, the skills that make me who I am as a sounds now, as a co-founder. Yeah. Okay, now you mentioned that you are an optometrist. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for those listening, an optometrist is basically somebody who, I mean, examines their eyes and then yes. basically you're looking at visual systems. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So when, in case I have issues with my eyes, I can still come and see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, my journey has, has, has <laughs> always been my experiences and anywhere I, I go, I, I, we really wanted to solve problems for humanity, mm -hmm. but it was all about, based on my experience, Personally, uh, I settled on studying on the eye mm -hmm. in the GHS when, uh, as, as a person in the agriculture sector, as a farmer's child, uh, something hit my eye, and then uh, as I got a trauma on the eye, I was blind for like about seven hours. So in the next morning, I was taken to the hospital when uh, I was I was I was attended to by God's grace. I I, I was able to see. That was what affirmed my decision to then uh, study about the eye as it's going to the eye, eye care practice uh, in the first place. So okay. as I said initially, my, my, my commitment has always revolved around my personal experiences. Okay. So now for yeah. somebody who just joined the show, they want to find out, okay, Ogalia, what are you into? How can you help me? Okay. Okay. So... Um, Looking at the micro and small local manufacturers in Africa, mm -hmm. they, are, they are not able to really position themselves globally, especially mm -hmm. in this era where the, uh, being online is a must. Yeah. And then we have the African intercontinental free trade agreement that is also uniting Africa and making it easy to trade within Africa. Uh, these people actually 
what we realized was that these people, they, they are not even, most of them are not even aware of these things. And then they, even if they are aware, they can't utilize it. Okay. The people we deal with on a daily basis are people who uh, are not tech savvy. Oh. Some of them are even blessed to have smartphones, but still are not even tech savvy to be able to position themselves on, 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 on the online market. Okay, or even not to even think of making use of the African intercontinental free trade system. <laughs> okay. So we came in and then we take away all the stress as we create a managed mini shop for them on one online marketplace. We we'll make it easier for manufacturers to be able to export their products within Africa and outside Africa. So we create and manage this mini shop for them on our online marketplace where clients can, uh, they can sell and receive payments globally. So your so Ogalia is basically is like a, is like a digital marketplace. Yes, for micro and small local manufacturers in Africa alone. Hello, okay. Only micro and small local manufacturers in Africa. In Africa alone. Okay. Now one thing I want to find out is that you mentioned that uh, some of the people you deal with mostly are not tech savvy. So uh, is it exclusive to only those who are not that tech savvy? Or if what if I'm tech savvy, but then I still feel like I want you to manage and create a shop online for me? Do you still do that? Would you do it? Oh, yes, we do. You see, uh, the reason why we are saying non-tech savvy is that majority of these people are not tech savvy. But okay. then we realize that they train people to also acquire, acquire skill sets. And that is what even makes me happy talking on this show because we are looking at uh, uh, youth skills day. So yes. they train youth to also acquire skill sets. And some people have as many as 30 trainees, 30 apprentices right. that they train. Yeah. You understand? Yes. So we realize that when we are able to empower these ones, we empower these 30 youth to also gain skills too. And at the end of the day, once we are looking at a population that is not, uh, a majority of them are not tech savvy. Yes. But then as time goes on, these youth that they empower, these are the tech savvy ones. So as this aged, informal local manufacturers pass by, then this youth will take over. Okay. You understand? Yes. Uh -huh. So we're actually laying a foundation for a tech savvy for the future. Uh, population. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, Alfred. Yeah. So uh, for you, I think for you, it was basically from the genesis. <laughs> but what other skill sets do you possess? I mean, okay. let's take away the school, the fact that you studied IT and the rest uh -huh. and platinum. What other skill sets do you possess? That if you decide that, okay, <laughs> I'm not full focusing on platinum today, okay. I can actually work or earn money from. Okay, I think I mentioned that my ambition for web was built on top of another ambition. Yes, right? I told you we'll come back so, to that foundation. <laughs> the foundation or the basic one, has to do with music, right? So since like eight years, I've been very passionate about music, learning how to play instruments, recording, just experimenting my way out. Okay, so, so can you sing rap or is just playing the instruments? And okay, so I produce music, I write for people, and I mix okay. and master, but that's not like currently my... Your my, main thing. <laughs> yes, but even though it's not my main thing, I've mm -hmm. still got some like some milestones in there. Just uh, last week, mm -hmm. um, Memphis DP was jamming to one of my records and it was oh. just amazing. I was like, wow, okay. So I'm actually taking time out from this um, uh, industry because I want to focus on my business at Platinum. But I just go on Instagram and then I saw Memphis DP, Memphis DP on IG like, Hey, well, I like this song. This is a jam. <laughs> and I'm like, God. So then now it, it changes your mind about actually yeah, wanting oh, to take a that, break from that, it. Oh, right. I still have like my mini studio set up in the house. I still work when like I have leisure and all of that. But my full commitment is still at Platinum. And that's like the full priority right now. Okay. So ever since uh, focusing on Platinum, mm -hmm. what, what are some of the challenges that you actually have encountered? I mean, starting it up from the genesis to mm -hmm. where it is now. And looking at your industry, it's not going to be that easy. Yeah. You know, I start off as a designer, like a web designer. And I used to work with um, a local creative agency here, okay. not far from Sorry here. not to cut you. I think okay. we have Fozia. Hi, Fozia. Okay, she she okay. She's still connecting. Please okay, go. so yeah, as I was saying, yeah, um, I used to work with a local creative agency here as a web designer. I just started off from my side. I'm not hearing anything. Can yeah. I? Yes. Yeah. So um, locally, and um, I, I was working for FHI 360, mm -hmm. uh, where I was a lead designer for Good Life Live It Well, 
And um, that was like about two years. Okay. And when it elapsed, I realized that there's so much opportunity in the web hosting industry because a lot of people were buying hosting, but they were just buying it from people. Who were like, reselling. Just buy hosting for me, buy domain for me. And these people were just buying it from GoDaddy, Namecheap, and they were even adding extra money yeah. on top of it. So GoDaddy is already expensive. Yeah. And now someone is also adding extra, extra money, money on yes. it. So you're buying hosting that's like roughly on the on the website is about 200 pounds mm-hmm. and the person is adding like extra 100 pounds yeah. it's like 300 pounds for you to for pay you, and i realized that even go that he is selling shared hosting that's mm-hmm. like a bit more technical but mm-hmm. on the basis like they have a server architecture mm-hmm. and they are sort of selling it in compartment and we are building like a whole system inside google cloud platform and google imagine google is like everywhere <laughs> so well, we, just this morning, before mm-hmm. I got here, Google just sent us about $4,000 in credits for our startup because they, they think it's valuable enough to go through. Well, congratulations. So, yes, so, yes, as I was saying, it, it's, it's not about the competition, about people having a lot of customers or anything. We just want to provide like quality and affordability because there are not a lot of like real companies hosting businesses locally. They are okay. just taking your money and buying it somewhere else. Buying somewhere. Okay, so um, aside from uh, studying IT in school, did mm-hmm. you take any short courses or did you engage in any uh, sessions or activities that actually helped you hone your skills when it actually came to uh, the web? The web. Okay, so I'll, I think <laughs> I think the first I'll say is YouTube University. Everyone has been there. Yeah. So, yeah, you IT in school is more or less like teaching you all the basics you need to know mm-hmm. and you have your passion. Yeah. So, you want to go into web, you just take whatever they've taught you, you look for your own resources. So, mm-hmm. I've been on Coursera, I've been on YouTube, Udemy, all of these platforms. Yeah. So, then you actually did invest to be, to, to develop a lot, the skills. A lot of yeah. investment. Okay, so I think it's 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 uh, noteworthy to put out there that mm-hmm. it's not just about identifying the fact that you have a certain set of skills, yeah. but then also you need to invest in it. And I'm sure with some of these uh, Coursera, Udemy, there's, you actually had to spend... A lot of money. A lot, uh, there are even courses I'm taking now that I'm paying like hundreds of dollars like on a monthly basis just to have those courses. So then, I mean, investment has to go into our skills so that we can develop it and earn something out of it. And and not to say that there are not local communities and places you could learn. I mean, MasterCard is investing so much money in in local um, incubators to give these talents. We have MEST as well, yeah. Yes, of course. I've been to MEST actually. and. Yeah, I just came out of mist. <laughs> we are still in there, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. Um, I think we do have Fozia on the line. Hello, Fozia. Yeah, hello. Can you hear us now? Yes, please. We finally did connect. You're welcome to the Africa Daily Show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, quickly to... If, if I just met you on the street and I asked you, what do you do? What would you tell me? I'm a female shoemaker. I'm into shoes. I make the shoes myself. Wow. That's... As well. Wow. That that is amazing. And I think it's it's very interesting because m- most of them, when you hear a shoemaker, you're thinking of a male. Yeah. So to come across a female shoemaker, and I think when for your terms, when you say shoemaker, let's clarify for <laughs> here in, in our base Ghana, we have a shoemaker for somebody who just repairs. But then you're talking about making the shoe from scratch. Yes, please. Wow. You put everything, I mean, from scratch. One back by day, you give us a full shoe. Yeah, from scratch, starting from the cutting of the board, leather, everything, the remote, everything, to the final outlet. Wow. Okay. Uh, growing up, did you actually envision that you become a shoemaker? You'd be making shoes? Was it like a dream you had when you were a child? Or did you study it in school? <laughs> no, that wasn't part of my dream. My dream was to be a journalist. Wow. But along the line, I have to change, I have to divert. I'm the kind of person who loves fashion as well, so I have to change the mindset. And to, to shoes. To shoe 
So then you actually, you diverted from the initial cause to focus on making shoes. Sorry? I'm saying you diverted from your initial dream of becoming a journalist to focus on making shoes. Yes, please. Okay, so how long, how long have you been doing that? Circumstances, you have to change the kind of thinking that I have. Wow. Okay, now, how long have you been making shoes? Sorry? For how long have you been making shoes? Past five years, almost six years now. Wow. She's, she, she has set herself up in the industry. That's six years of making shoes from scratch, which is like very, very important. I think it's a good feat. And I want to find out when you actually, along the line, due to circumstances uh, that led you to making shoes, did you have any skills in shoemaking or did you have to learn it or go to school for it or did you just build it from YouTube or something? No, oh, I have to, I have to go to a place and learn it, which I did. So like I'm more like an apprentice. That was how the whole thing came about. I've been an apprentice for some years. Wow, wow! And then you picked up and then decided to set up your own. Yes, please. But as initially. I'm already into it, like selling, buying and selling them already. So at the initial stage, I have to learn it on my own. Wow. Now, did you, I mean, what are some of the challenges you encountered being a woman and then wanting to, I mean, enter such a space where you find a lot of men who make the shoes? Um, Like people just be like... Wow, a female, a female learning how to, to make. Why don't you go in to learn sewing or makeup things? And I'm like, I'm not that kind of person who likes makeup. This is what I want, and this is what I want to do. And there's no way you can change my mind. So those are the challenges. Wow. Like most of the time. Wow. Okay, okay. Um, please, please stay on. Don't, don't disappear and don't go anywhere. Now, doctor. Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. We still have you on the line. I, I want to find out. You mentioned that actually, uh, you guys believe in what you're doing and based on experiences. You also mentioned the fact that the people you actually create the mini shops have apprentices that they invest into. I believe, um, with Fozia's story, it's is closely related and linked to what you spoke about. But I want to find out. What 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 are some of the changes COVID nineteen has inspired in the way you operate? Okay, uh, we would always say that COVID nineteen has really uh, how did, uh, it has hastened the speed at which we are going because now people, especially those, uh, they need to go global, they need to operate remotely, or they need to serve clients regardless of your location, mm -hmm. has become more of a need now, mm -hmm. uh, especially those who are offline, these local manufacturers that are offline, mm -hmm. they are now appreciating the fact that hey, there is something called online, and then uh, when I get there, I can be able to serve my clients. Because now, truth, in-store visits has reduced drastically. Uh, Fauzia will tell you that, yeah. that in-store visits has, has, has reduced. So uh, it, it's more of now, it has really uh, uh, made people appreciate or our, our target market appreciate what we are doing. It has really uh, set up the uh, set up the risk at which we 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 actually encounter. This so day. you you actually yeah. have seen a surge in sales or in surge of people patronizing your sure. online shop. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. Alfred. Have you, uh, what What are some of the ways COVID-19 has, I mean, you guys are already online. <laughs> but then yeah. ever since COVID came, I mean, since March there about, has it affected you in any way? Um, I would say positive and negative. Okay, so negative first. Okay, so we started a little bit um, after, no, before COVID, a mm -hmm. little before COVID. And okay. most of the clients we had then, mm -hmm were 
clients that I already had on my roster as a freelance web designer. Okay. Right. And I migrated them. Okay. And these are like a very, like most of them are like very big businesses. Mm -hmm. And because of COVID, mm -hmm. most of them decided to shut down. Oh. So then they were moving away. Renewal wasn't coming. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we shifted to a whole new phase that a lot of people now want to come online. They want to set up e-commerce websites. They want to set up blogs. They are in the house. They are bored. They want to write something, make money online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot of people that contacted us like, oh, how can we make money online? So we had to go up and partner with um, a local blog called um, Infidier. Mm -hmm. It's like very big across West Africa. And they have a lot of hits. So we had a partnership with Infidier okay. that, okay, if you can get bloggers or people who want to become bloggers mm -hmm. to come on to Plagnum and sign up for our packages, okay. we'll give you this discount. And then that was what did the magic for us. Wow. So a lot of people were searching how to start a blog in Ghana. And so far, that article on Infidier is still number one on Google when you search to date. Wow. So that was what did the magic for us. And that, that actually opened the gates. Yes. And that's even one of the key services we offer these businesses because that was something we tried, tested for ourselves mm -hmm. and it worked like magic because after the article went up to mm -hmm. date, like people still hit on us. Like, I saw your article. I want to start a blog. <laughs> I saw I took I want to start a blog and it keeps going on and on and on. And on. So, so in case anybody wants to start a blog as well, they can actually come yeah, to yeah, Plagnum. Yeah, it's still, it's still available. Wonderful, lovely, lovely. wonderful, wonderful. Uh, let me let me just quickly go to Fozia. Hello, Fozia. Yes, please. Yes, I I want to find out with COVID nineteen, has it affected work for you? How has it? I mean, affected the shoemaking business for you? Um, it has really affected us. Um, because they are. People are not going on programs and other things, so mm -hmm. it makes the market very slow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but I want so to... The challenges, it's... And the border closure, too, so... It has... find it difficult to send in things... Outside. Accra to, like, outside can. Wow. Okay, but have you have you considered? Okay, first off, do you have an online shop or platform or online presence? Yes, please. I have the online shop, which is Dabs and Blue. Okay, so then, but do you get more sales through that during this COVID nineteen times as to having people come directly to you? Sorry. Do you get more sales through your online shop during this whole COVID nineteen time? Oh, not at all. Unlike the previous, yes. Wow. Okay. With this COVID, business has been really slow for us. Wow. Okay. But then, as you learnt, have you, do you have apprentices? Because I believe when it comes to skills, it's the key thing is about sharing or, you know, passing it on to the next generation, equipping them with it so they can also be able to make something for themselves. So do you have apprentices? Do you have people you are training yourself? No, for now, I'm not training students. I have no student at the moment. Okay. I'm actually on a project, a different project too, so okay. it's on hold for now. Okay, okay. So I'll come back, I'll come back to you. Hello, Doc. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's it's been a great thing. Now let me. I just want to quickly come to the end of it because we're running out of time. But I want to find out. What what would you tell a youth who is out there listening to you today? Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, just a quick nugget. You have to be observant with your community, whatever community you are in, and you have to observe your environment, pick out the things that make you uncomfortable, and then be ready to serve and learn. Because one thing I've realized is that now everybody, they sort of, I want to be my own boss. Mm -hmm. There's actually nothing like that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, on that field, there's actually nothing like that. As a youth, you have to have the spirit of servitude. Uh, you have to be willing to serve to end, okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's not going to be easy, but if uh, the, the accounts have an adage, like, yeah. if, yes, yes, yes. 
I don't know if, but anybody listening would, would try to understand that. So, servitude, personal that has, has some of the things that has, has, has lifted me a little. Uh, and then also, whilst you are observant and then you are you are a quick listener, that's two servitude seven. You mm-hmm. should also try to know that uh, you have to be realistic. Uh, the truth is that you follow your passion. Yes, follow your passion. Acquire a skill that will sustain you. Okay, be crazy mm-hmm. enough to follow your passion yeah. and also acquire a skill that will sustain you. And skill acquisition is not only about uh, uh, doing something like like producing a physical uh, product. Mm-hmm. Alfred, for instance, has skills and then he's using to, 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 to build a business. Yeah. Okay, yes. So uh, you have to find a skill and you have to be committed to it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. these are these are some of the things that I see to be a little missing in in in, in the youth. I'm a youth myself, but I see the little missing in uh, the people I, I I I find myself, the youth that we we see ourselves today. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just about being uh, being a listener, like self, mm-hmm. the observant of your environment, mm-hmm. and then also like acquire skills. You follow your passion, yes, but try to acquire skills that would uh, sustain you and then so seeing the people also around you yeah okay thank you so much thank you so much Mr. Praise for joining us right. um before 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 I take your final words I, I have my colleague Hafiz here and I think he has some questions for you Mr. Alfred okay yes Mr. Alfred uh, yeah. well, thank you thank you thank you for sharing uh, what you do with us anyway but uh, quickly I, I I want to know you okay you and uh, I want to know what it is like as a young man mm-hmm. um, on the work-life balance scale. Okay. How, how has it been like trying to hone your skills while trying to manage things on the home front? Okay. Do you have time to, you know, for, for family or, <laughs> I mean, the work seems to have taken over <laughs> the whole thing. Okay, so um, I don't think any of my family members is listening right now. <laughs> I don't think any of them is on. But if any of them is on, no. I'm sorry, man. But honestly <laughs> speaking... <Wow. laughs> I've been out of home since um, since 2016, right? When you say out of home, what do you mean? Um, I've been living alone by myself. And not because I wanted to, but because I just wanted that space to build what I am doing now. Wow. You get it? So okay. in the house, there was so much distraction, like, go get a job, okay, Go yeah. do this. Okay, why are you I think, always I behind think your spoke, laptop? About this. You know, my mom's always saying, okay, I see your friends, they are doing this, why are you not? So it was always like so much demand for me. And during those times, I was more like concentrated on the music front, mm-hmm. even though mm-hmm. I was also committed to building this company. Yeah. But imagine someone who's just out of school mm-hmm. and you decide to just do music. music. Mm. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't sit well. Yeah. My mom was just crazy, <laughs> so I just told her like, you know what, I'm, I may, I may go outside, mm-hmm. but I won't go so like I won't get there so deep that you lose me. Like, I'm still aware of myself, so just oh. allow me just explore, get to where I want to get to. But in the beginning, she didn't I really get it. But it got to a point she was just hearing me out there like, okay, I saw you with medical. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Now she was, and then I it. it got to a point. I wanted to leave the music and focus on the web, and she didn't understand. <laughs> You're rolling with the big boy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, she said, I was like, okay, it's you, Jai Nyumna. She said, how could you? That be the same Nyumna, then Kawe you. You know? <laughs> yeah, but. Okay. Yeah, that's been it. But it's not easy, especially looking at it like all my friends, or like most of my friends are employed. And yeah. they are getting salaries. Yeah. Right? I mean, the white collar job. I mean, yeah. They, yeah. they can get loans easily. Yeah. Right? So they have that flexibility. Mm. But some of us, more or less, like you are on your own. That's mm. true. So everything you are doing is just from you. Wow. Even if you walk to a bank, you want a loan, they will not give you. Exactly. You get it. So it hasn't been easy. But That's rough. That's rough. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, uh, hello, Fozia. <laughs> Yes, dear. Yes, I wanted to find out. Alfred, Alfred just made a very important point. I just wanted to ask you something quickly. Uh, when it comes to, do you have you received any form of assistance aside being an apprentice? Have you received any form of assistance, mentorship, or anything of the sort? How easy is it for you to have access to 
training to financial assistance to loans. Looking at the space in which you find yourself. Um, I've actually not tried any of those things. I've really not gone into any loan assistance yet. Okay. But I'm sure I'm yet to. Okay, 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 okay. Now, what what would you like to tell any female listening to you that, um, like you mentioned, when you started, they were wondering why you're not into uh, sewing, hairdressing, or makeup artistry. What would you like to tell the young female who wants to go into a space that uh, is deemed for men only? Um, what I like to tell them is whatever that you, you have focused on, don't let anyone bring you down. Just keep your eye focused and you have to achieve whatever dream you you really want to because you know what you want to do. So don't let anyone tell you what to do. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Doc, once again. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, do have right. a lovely afternoon. Alfred, yeah. your final words, and then we're out. Okay, so um, um, I'd just like to tell everyone out there, especially those who have the intent of having a website, that mm -hmm. you shouldn't just give your money to someone to buy hosting for you. Okay. It's not advisable. They have so much access to your information. So you should come to a company like Plagnum, so you can have more security and more accessibility to your content. And then also to youth like myself mm -hmm. out there, this is not like an advice per se, because I'm also still a youth and okay. <laughs> I need more of it. But essentially, we shouldn't be selfish and we should know how to give back, right? Okay. And so we, we want to be bosses so quick. Mm -hmm. We want yeah. to run our own businesses. That's fine. But we need to self-determine a roadmap for ourselves so we know at what stage or how point that we need to go into owning a business. Mm -hmm. And if we want to become a boss, maybe we should start from running the business as the lowest rank. Yeah. Do the job. And when the business is there, then you can call yourself maybe a, a CEO, a founder. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> people do call me that sometimes. Okay. But I, 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 you feel I you're not there I'm yet? I'm not there yet, you okay. know. So I, I feel like even if I go sit at meetings with people, mm -hmm. I just mention, oh, my name is Alfred in Kansas, I'm from Platinum. I don't say I'm the founder. Of, okay. Because I feel like there's so much work what to be done. Yes, and okay. we are still getting there, even though I can put it on my social media, put it, but you need to do the work, you know, and mm -hmm. you need to learn how to give back to society and don't base off the fact that maybe someone doesn't know how much web hosting cost. Yeah. So you charge them like thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. Mm. <laughs> so, <as well. laughs> so you should know how to work okay. ethically. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you so much to all of you, to Fozia, to Doctor, and to you, Alfred. Thank you guys so much for making time and sharing your skills with us here on the show. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe and share.